Jesus. I, I want to minister this morning on embracing. So I say embrace. On embracing, embracing. And, and before we get going uh, in the, this morning's sermon, don't forget we're not having service Thursday. So if you show up Thursday, we're not going to be here. The rapture didn't happen, we're just not here. But we'll be here Tuesday. So I say Tuesday. Tuesday at 7.30, 6.30 for prayer. That, that we can have service on Tuesday so that you guys will pray and get ready for Wednesday. Amen. And Thursday to have your pollo loco. Amen. Your turkey. Amen. The turkeys are hiding right now. Praise the Lord. But let them enjoy it. Family, if you have nowhere to go, invite somebody. Invite yourself. Hallelujah. And go enjoy. Amen. If you have your Bible, turn to me to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. I want to minister to on embracing, embracing. Philippians chapter 4. When you have it, say amen. We're going to start in verse 8. In verse 8. It's finally, brother, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and any, there is anything praiseworthy, meditate, listen, meditate on these things. The things which you learn and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for everything you are doing in this house and in our lives, Father. I pray continue moving, Father. Continue having your way, Father. In Jesus' name, when everyone says, Amen. Amen. I want you to see here. Here's a beautiful picture that's taking place. Paul's writing to the believers of Philippians. Philippians, excuse me, and he's helping them in the time of need, in the time of disaster, things that are going on in their life. There's occasions that people are trying to come in and, and, and divide and bring a lot of we're doctrine. So he tried to let them know there's a simple gospel. I've already showed you what needed to be done. I've, I've shown you in my lifestyle. I've shown you who I am. I, I, he says in verse 9, the things which you've learned, you've been in the Bible studies, you've sat down, you've learned, you've been imparted into your life. Now, he said what you have received through the hearing, because faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word of God. So he, he's letting them know, he's laying it out to me, but then you saw my lifestyle, you see the way I lived, you see how I, 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 I conducted myself, how it was an example. And he's saying these things because he wants them to know that you must, you embrace this. You embrace this. And the word embrace means this, church, to take up gladly, to welcome in, the opportunity to hold on. So when you embrace somebody, you're welcoming them, you're loving them. When you know somebody that you know, what you do is you embrace, you hug on them, you, you, you give them a pat, and hey, it's good to see you. You embrace their life. You embrace them, and you're showing others that, that you know them. And you say, you embrace this gospel. You embrace the gospel. You embrace what I've said. You embrace what I've taught you. It came into your life. It came into your families. It came into your houses. It came into the church. It came into you. You embrace it. Come on. You embrace it. And so we have to watch out because this world wants us to embrace so many things. It wants us to embrace lies. It, come on, it wants us to, to, to uh, embrace hypocrisy. It wants us to, to compromise what we believe and what we stand for. <coughs> and it tells you, oh, if you don't, if, if you don't like this, then you're anti this and you're anti that. Media has a way of dictating who we are. And all of a sudden, we become like a bunch of cows. Oh, yeah, that didn't sound right, but. <laughs> like a herd. And we're just following everything as it goes. Instead of standing up and knowing what is right. Come on, somebody. When you know what is right, you, you stand up for it. And so he's saying to us, my dear brother, whatever things are true. I believe if we're going to embrace things, we need to embrace what is truth. Someone say truth. True, why? Because truth keeps us on track. Truth keeps us on track. What is it? Well, excuse me. Not track. Target. Not target down the street. But a target, an aim, a goal, a mark. So when you embrace truth, it keeps you 
and it keeps us on target. We're hitting our mark. We're, we are growing up to be what God calls us to be godly men, godly women. You're hitting that mark. Come on, somebody. You're hitting that mark because what? Because truth. So I say truth. Truth. The truth and the word of God is true. It says, follow your brother, whatever things are true. See, life presents choices of truth and falseness. We live in a world that it's a lot of lot of image. Image, self-image, self-image. They're gonna do selfies, help us somebody. Because we live in a selfish world. But we're going to get into that in a little bit. But, but this is the thing. When we embrace truth, it keeps us on target. We're able to hit our mark. We're able, we're able to grow up healthy and spiritually strong. Can someone say amen? amen. But it's a choice. Someone say a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. Listen, we encourage these choices every day. We, we encourage in the word of God to make right choices. But it's funny how the world will try to encourage you to make wrong choices. You're, you're too young, you're still young, do what you want to do. Yes, yeah, true, you're young, but you don't, tomorrow's not promised to man. Oh, come on, somebody. And so the world will always tell you, look, you got a lot to live. Okay, now you're older and you live crazy, but you've damaged so much things. And you lived a crazy life, but you damaged so many things. You hurt so many people. And so we need to understand that we need to embrace truth. Someone say embrace truth. Embrace truth. Learn to make right choices. Learn to stand for what is right. Learn to call. Learn to stand for what is right. And what God put in us. What the word of God put in us. And this was Paul. And Paul's making this out. He's saying, come on. Truth is the root in the scripture. So truth will create roots in you to stand. When you embrace truth, it creates roots. So now you're saying, I believe this, and because I believe it, I embrace it. This is my root now. These are my roots. My roots are the gospel. My roots is the word of God. My roots is to live like the man of God. My roots is to be faithful. My roots, come on somebody, my roots is to be, to be But I got the word in me. I got the truth in me. And, and, and it has helped me to stay on target. It keeps me on target. Truth keeps me on target. In John, 7, 7, John 17, 17, it says the word is truth. Jesus says the word is truth. So the word don't lie. Oh, the word, come on, the word don't lie. The word is truth. The word is true. And you'll hear us. I'm your written thing. Oh, Jesus. That's what you see here, not me. Praise the Lord. Because the word is so true and it cuts. But it, it, when it cuts you, it was like a good cut. To get healthy. To get strong. To get mighty. It, it, it get into the marrow. It get into our bones. It get into our spirit. It get into our soul. And it'll divide the junk. You see, we have to understand that when we get to get to know the Bible, we begin to know the truth. <laughs> when we begin to read our word and open our lives and embrace what is true, it helps us to be truthful. Listen to what I'm saying. When you start embracing truth, you start being truthful. Truthful with yourself. I don't want to get hit on myself, but yeah. <laughs> truthful, truthful, truthful. Because you know something, we're a bunch of liars. <laughs> and it's not even by choice, we're so used to lying. For things that you know you, you, you didn't have no reason to lie, but you did it anyways. <laughs> you don't hear me. <laughs> but the word, it gets cut all this down the way off us. It's because we embrace what is truth, we embrace what is right. We embrace the truth, we embrace the truth. And what happens when we embrace lies? When we embrace lies, we start living a lie. When we embrace lies, it brings pain and agony. When we embrace lies, it brings fear. When they start telling us this, 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 and this, a bad report, we embrace it, it develops fear. 
What is fear? Fear is out the fear means just false evidence appearing real. That's all it is. It's false evidence appearing real. And it's not real, but because you embraced it, you believe it. Someone told you you're ugly, you believed it. He ain't ugly. I seen ugly. You went ugly. He guys look good. Someone, you, someone told you you're a dummy, you embraced that, you're like, I can't do nothing. You're not. You embraced it, and that's why you think you can't do nothing. Come on, somebody. No one's ever going to love you. You embrace that, why do you think no one's ever going to love you? Let me tell you, I mean, that means you're going to grow up. You're going to be okay. I don't know, that was a free, free, praise the Lord. But that's the reality. We think because somebody told us something, we hold up, we embrace that. And it misses us out. They told me I'll never amount to anything, I embraced it. They told me I was going to be a knucklehead, I embraced it. They told me you're, you're good for nothing, I embraced it. Come on, and that's what they came to tell me, so I embraced it, and I lived up to that what I embraced. A lot of us, that's what we do, we embrace what they told us, and that's something we have to wild and recklessly. I'll show you crazy until you get crazy because you embrace crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. so ladies, you're crazy. Look at you, man. My God. <laughs> but we embrace it. That's what I'm telling you. Don't embrace that. Don't. That's false. It's fake. Come on, somebody. It is it's a lie. It ain't true. Amen. God created you for something special. Something mighty. Something great. There's nothing greater when a person finds his, po his purpose. Yeah. When you find your purpose, my God, you change. Yeah. You're different. You're a different man. You're a different woman. Yeah. Husbands, when you find your purpose, man, you change. Yeah. But when you have a purpose, you go in your circles. Yeah. Embrace the truth. It'll help you find your purpose. Yeah. Turn me really quick to Psalm 119. Psalms 119. See, how do we continue embracing truth? We hide the truth in our heart. Keeps us in truth. Psalms 119, verse 9, we have to say amen. Says these words. How can a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Listen, oh, let me not wander from your commands. Your word I have hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. He's saying, my God, I, 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 all, all I'm going to stay right and I'm going to stay clean before God is getting that word and putting it in my heart. By what? By embracing it. I embracing it. So you embrace it and guess what? It helps you behave. It, it sometimes people say, well, I don't know how to make the choices. Read problem today. Prohibio. Problems. But I can no say in English, prohibios. I shall help you. Praise the Lord. There's a mess in here. That's the Lord. But problems, pro a problem will help you. And it'll cut you up, man. It'll help you make right decisions and help you. I mean, what's today? Today's the word. The 24th, read Proverbs 24 today. Then tomorrow, 24. There's like one for every month. And when, you, when you've got only 28 days, there's enough for two more. A proper day, keep the devil away. Hallelujah. It'll help you. I'm telling you, come on. Read a proper. It'll help you. Today, you're going to read it. You're going to be all bad, Pastor. I don't know. You know what the word is? The word will cut you up in a good way. You think that when you're eating a pineapple, you cut away the bad stuff? And eat all the good stuff, hallelujah, get hungry. We're almost done. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but again, church, we've got to hide the word in our heart. We've got to embrace the truth. Even when the truth is hard. Even when the truth cuts us so deep, it hurts. See, embracing truth calls for us to reject what is wrong. So when you embrace truth, it calls you to reject what is wrong. So you know what you're saying? I'm going to take what's right. I'm going to regret that it's wrong. You guys with me so far? Yeah. Now, draw me really quick to Galatians, Galatians, Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 says this. 
I, I, I marvel that you are turning away so soon. <laughs> listen, listen. From him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Here everybody is tripping. They're running to a lie instead of truth. They're starting to embrace falseness, hypocrisy. They're starting to, to, to go to a different doctrine. And he's saying, I marvel that they got you that fast. When you already know the truth. When people tell you, oh man, you can dream, you can party, you can sleep around. God will forgive you. Yeah, he'll forgive you, but imagine getting stuck in that. Some of you didn't look like you can't just have no one drink. <laughs> That's when you don't wake up the next day. Who's talking about? And that's how it is. People want to preach. I, okay, I told you guys before, the grace is not licensed to sin. Grace is to help us get our act together. Come on, somebody. Grace is to help us. Thank God for grace because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here. But grace is not a, a license to sin. It's licensed to get our act together. Everybody with me so far? And so here it is. We have to learn to embrace truth. And so now when he's telling them the truth, are they going to eat it? Are they going to embrace it? Because when we get confronted with the word, sometimes we're like, hey, the pastor's mean. The preacher's mean. He's yelling at me. Like a man who picks up the offering. You got to go wrong. Like, dude, stop yelling. Be cool. Smile. It's okay. Smile at the yelling, everybody. No, I missed that one. Okay, praise the Lord. Or our preachers. Ah! Dude, smile. <laughs> Tell people, man, just smile, it's okay, smile. Let people, let it cut them, let them go, okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> I gotta make you laugh before I make you cry this morning, amen. Have oh, mercy, yes, Lord, have mercy. Here we go. Look at verse 7. Which is not another, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. Wow. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than which are preached to you, let him be accused, accursed. Listen, listen to he's saying the angels can't even preach whatever they want. They need to preach what is true. And if they don't preach what is true, then they themselves are going to be accursed, thrown out, and into the pit of fire. That's the simplicity of what he's saying. And that's why one third of the angels got cast out of heaven. Because they believed a lie. Because they were deceived. They didn't embrace truth. And when you embrace a lie, it takes away from your target. When you embrace a lie, it robs you of who you are. How many got lied to and, and you bought something and you got robbed? Oh, I'm not the only one, praise the Lord. One day, some guy was selling me a gold ring at the bus station. <laughs> Believe it or not, it wasn't gold. I bought it for 20 bucks, turned my finger green. By the time I got to Texas, my finger was green. That was like over 28 years ago. And so I said, I'll never buy something dumb like that again. I can't believe I did it. So then again, a couple years later, met a guy selling a bracelet. It was gold. And I said, no, let me check it. Well, no, no, we can't check it. I said, no. So I bought it. Turned my wrist gold. I said, never again will I believe this lie. So then again, <clears throat> the third time, the final time. Because you know what we say, we'll never do it again. Yeah. Manual, some guy pulled up. Manual, look, he got a book with all his stuff. And I'm like, okay. So I bought a necklace. My neck turned green. And he didn't need no help turning green. My neck turned green. I said, never again. So I've never bought anything again. That's the truth. <laughs> but that's the way we are sometimes, is we know better, but for some reason we still embrace it. Do you know that's an almond? I mean, praise the Lord. For those who are going to get that later on, you'll get it later on when you go home. And you got burned. Yes, it's for you guys. Praise the Lord. And you still did it again. We embrace falseness, hoping that it will become true sometimes. 
We embrace falsehoods hoping that it will change. It's like that, it's like that snake that was on the ground. And the guy said, I'm going to pick you up, but don't bite me. He said, I'm not going to bite you because I'm cold. I'm cold. He picks up the snake, puts the snake in his shirt, and he's rubbing on the snake. And some our snakes start getting warm, and the snake bit him. He got, grabbed, threw him on the floor. He said, you dumb snake, why'd you bite me? He knew I was a snake when you picked me up. That was my nature. You know I was a snake when you embraced me. And sometimes we embrace false thinking it's going to be true and we burn ourselves. Come on, somebody, amen. Some make bad because like, that was me and I embraced the snake. <laughs> Need to understand here is Paul he's laying it out and the Bible is also he goes on he says these words in chapter 3 of the same Galatians verse 1 he says oh you foolish Galatians who has bewitched you what she did not obey the truth Dang. he says what's the matter with you who, who did this to you who befriended you and made you believe a lie That's what he's saying. It was who, who, who loved you? What did you embrace that made you believe what was false truth? So we have to watch ourselves, church. It's very important that the truth that we embrace keeps us on target. Keeps us on target. Everybody okay? Yeah. Go, on, go to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy. Let me have you say amen. 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 1 says this verse. But now, but know this, that in the last days, wow, times of stress, wow, will come. For men will be lovers of themselves. Listen to what it's saying, but, in, but now this, that in the last days, listen, Times of stress, stressful times. Stress to embrace, but it's wrong. We well, you know when you go through stress, sometimes you just you let things go. Listen to what I'm saying. When you get tired and you're full of stress, you let things go. Your kids, your kids are like, Dad, can I go? Dad, can I go? And you're like, no. Then you're like, just go. And you're like, oh my God, what did I just do? <laughs> Later on, I, I'll, I'll, give, I'll be the first one to say I was guilty of that. Guilty. I'll be the first one to say guilty. Because in the times of stress and the times of getting a, a, a previous times and hard times, we we embrace what is wrong. And it hurts the ones we love. It, it, it don't seem like it now, but later on you find out at that moment you said okay to something and you and it wasn't right. So we have to watch when we're in stressful times how we what we embrace and what we do. It goes on and says this. It says, for men will be lovers of themselves. That means you love yourself more than everybody and anybody. You put yourself above everything else, and that's scary. You put yourself above God. When you're married, you're, you should be God, and you should put your wife above you. Amen. 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 You should love her. Not more than God, but you should love her more than you. Yeah. Yeah. You got one. You got the guy in the room. You should. I love my wife. Sometimes she asks me to do stuff, but I don't want to do it, but I love her more, so I gotta get up and do it. Yeah. Even though six months went by, I just still did it. <laughs> Oh, but the other day she got me running around and I was like, okay, drive it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And I want to say no, but I say, you know, I got to do it. I love her more. I'm going to thank Jesus. And so I go do it. And I'm not, I don't always do that, but when I do do it, praise the Lord. I try my best. But we have to learn to do that once in a while. You got to deposit those emotions, that love. Amen. It goes on. Just for the sake of time, he goes on and says, lovers of money. That right, that right there in some 
hits it because we can love money more than anything. And because we love money, we seek money and we rob the tithe. We rob the 10% that belongs to the Lord. Listen, when you first get saved, you learn how to tithe. You learn to give to God what belongs to God. And that's understandable. You've learned that. But when you get saved, been saved already for a while, and you know what belongs to God, but then you rob Him, you're cursing yourself. You're cursing yourself. And then you're in ministry, and then you're trying to be an example, and you don't tie it, you're cursing yourself. You guys with me? That's what it says. That's what the truth says. That's what the Word of God says. In Malachi chapter 3, read it. So that's the truth. So it's hard to embrace truth sometimes. Amen? Amen. And so this is what he's saying. He goes on numbers of money. Let me move on. I'll move on really fast. Boasters are powerful, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Come on, teenagers. Disobedient to parents. You should love your parents. You should thank God you have your parents with you. Come on, somebody. Love your parents. Show them kindness. Love them. Hug them. Kiss them. Show them kindness. How many teenagers are here? Raise your hand if you're a teenager. Oh, man, you guys are special. Look at that. Oh. Woo, come on, give them a good bath offering, amen. That's the head. Those of you guys should be in the youth class too. Hallelujah. <laughs> Every other Friday we have we have we have youth services for you guys. You don't know now you know. Teach you how to be, take care of your parents. Parents, you should you should have dragged your kids, you drop them off. You drag them everywhere else. <laughs> the truth, hallelujah. But we're getting ready to do some changes. We're going to start doing it probably on the Sunday mornings so that we can cast them to the back room and they can get saved. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Moving along very slowly. Here we go. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Man, you may be unthankful for a lot of things. Thanksgiving. We're, come on. We're, we're in the month of Thanksgiving. We should be thankful. We should be thankful. Man. This Tuesday is going to be a great Thanksgiving sermon. Come out and embrace it. Have a good time. I'm not speaking to you. It's going to be powerful. Uh, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For those who sort of, oh, listen, for, those, for this sort are those who creep into the household and make captives of gullible women, gloating down with sins, led away with various lusts, away learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Don't be gullible. Don't be gullible. You know the truth. Don't be gullible. Like some people sometimes, somebody could be telling you something, you know it's wrong. Because you have itchy ears, you want to hear it. Don't be gullible. That's what it's saying. Don't be caught up. Look at Read that study that. It'll help you. Just for the sake of time, we're moving on. And there's a lot there. There's a lot there, church. That we have to understand that, that the truth will keep us on target. Everybody with me? Amen. Focus on the truth will keep us hitting the mark. Amen. Hitting the Amen. mark. Second thing, embracing honesty keeps us on track. Listen. When we embrace truth, we're going to hit the mark. Yeah. When we embrace honesty, it'll keep us on a track. It's like a train. A train that's on a track. That track is going to take that train where it wants to go. The train doesn't go where it wants to go. It goes where the track is laid out. Yeah. You guys with me? You with me? So, so when you embrace honesty, honesty will lay a track for you. And so then all you do is you embrace honesty and you go for it. You guys with me? Now, now the word honesty means this. Listen, listen. Free from deceit nor fraud. When the, something is honest, when somebody is honest, it'll free you from deceit. When you embrace honesty, it's going to free you from lying to yourself. It'll free you from the fraud, from being fake. Hmm. So he says, whatever things are honest. What other words honest means noble. Noble or no honesty. <clears throat> here, is the, here is what I want you guys to understand. When you embrace that, 
When we need to learn to be honest with ourselves. Because I know sometimes we, we, like, we need to lie to ourselves. We lie to ourselves. No, I'm fine. No, you're not. I'm okay. No, you're not. Maybe in one hand you're okay, but the other hand you're messed up. <laughs> well, on one hand maybe you're fine, but the other hand you're going through a lot of stuff. And so we have to learn to embrace honesty. Say, so, you know what? I need to fix some stuff. I can't act like this no more. I can't be like this no more. Come on, I, 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 can, I can't be in the house of God. And I, mean, I just can't. You gotta learn to embrace the honesty. Be honest with yourself. I need the truth. I need God. I need a change. I need a new heart. I need a new spirit. I, I need God to help me. I need a touch. If I want to finish this year strong, I need to fix some stuff. I need to get rid of some needs. I have to embrace honesty. We have to embrace honesty. Honesty. See, the Pharisees were proudful. The Sadducees were doubtful. Christians are liars. <laughs> Let me say that again. Pharisees are very powerful people. The Sadducees are very doubtful people. Christians will become very, very much liars. Man. And not because we want to, but because we're trying to put an image up. And because we have an image, we lose fixing us. Come on, somebody. We miss it. We miss it. We miss it. And so I'm telling you, don't do that. Don't do that. Embrace honesty. Embracing honesty will help you to see the possibles. Amen. What is possible. So you don't embrace honesty. You're saying, with God, all things are what? Possible. So when you start embracing honesty, okay, God, I need to fix some things. God said, okay, now this is possible. You can become a better man. Come on, you can become a better woman. What is possible is that you're going to be okay. But it's gonna, you got to embrace honesty and it's going to take you to where possibilities are endless. you got to understand that, church. It's very important to know that. Because we have, we have lived in a world today where media lies. We have filters for everything. Got a filter for a thing. you got guys putting on girls' hair. Come on, dude. you got all these weird filters. you put a filter on. You don't know what she really looks like. No. See, let me tell you something, women. Listen, women. Listen, all you women, listen up. When you marry a guy or you see a guy, and that's what you're going to get. This is all you're going to get. <laughs> Crooked teeth, messed up nose, beard, munches here, munches there. That's what he looked like. You marry a girl. She got makeup from the back of her neck to the front of her head. To ear to ear. She got everything switched this way and that way. And, and, and so when you get married, you marry, you marry, you know, the mask. And so the next day she takes off her makeup, you wake up the morning, she's like, I got a very Sarah and Anita. I'm gonna call No Rachel, right? Rachel, what's the sisters? Rachel, not Leah, sorry, Leah, look at me. But again, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with makeup, so don't hit <laughs> <in> your arm. <laughs> the women, not the men, the women. <laughs> this ain't Korean pop culture. Uh, yeah, you guys are too much, man. You guys are messed up, man. <laughs> I messed up people. <laughs> Where was I? I forgot what I was at. Embracing the truth. Embracing the. Um, Honestly, honestly, thank you. Honestly, honestly. Embrace it honestly, man. This is what you will get. When you embrace honesty, it just speaks to you. It speaks to you. And we like to, like I said, filters. There's filters on phones. There's filters on this. Uh, uh, they take pictures thinking everything's looking perfect and fine, but they're not. They're not. Look at these people that are on Instagram, people that are on all these tweet, tweet, twat, twat, all that crazy stuff. <laughs> they, that's what they do for a living. They got these lights, and I, I, I watch my daughter, she's watching, doing, she's watching this television, a documentary, I'm like, my God, this stuff is so phony. Yeah. But it's an image. Yeah. 
is an image. And so we try to live up to that image and we don't live up to it so then we think something's wrong with our lives. Yes. Nothing's wrong with your life. That's right. yeah. Come on, so you're okay. Amen, you're okay. To nobody else. Don't try to live up to nobody else. Embrace honesty. Maybe there's some changes you need to do. Okay, make some changes. Fix some stuff. Adjust some things. Be a better husband. Be a better wife. Be a better son. Be a better believer. Embrace things that are going to help you do better. That's why when we read it right here, it says meditate on these things, which means are above. Let me give you one more. Embrace the just. Embrace the just. Why just? Well, just will keep you in touch with Jesus. Now the word just means this. Guided by truth, by reason, and by correction. He said whatever things are just, whatever things are going to guide you to the truth, to what's correct, and to what is reasonable. The Lord will take care of his people. The Lord will take care of his people. We have to learn to allow the word of God to correct us. And we're, so we embrace the just. We embrace the guidance. See, I can't help you when you're going through something. But I can help you make the right decisions when you're going through something. I can't stop whatever you're going through. You can't stop what you're going through. But you can get the guidance to go through it well. Strong, come on, and you can go through and finish. This is a scary thing, guys. If I can say this, please. We live in a world, and I'll be talking about this in a couple weeks. We live in a world that we learn so much information. We learn, we hear so many sermons and so many things. But the hard, for, hard thing for us to do is make it applicable. It needs to apply it. No, we don't apply it, and so that's why we won't see change. That's what we don't see breakthrough. That's what we don't see miracles. That's what we don't see our family getting healed and getting changed and getting touched because we're not applying nothing. We hear so much, but we don't apply change. We don't apply change and because we don't apply change, we bring everybody in the church, but we don't ever bring ourselves. And we never look at ourselves. You know what? Maybe if I just stop going to the bar all the time and partying all the time and being crazy all the time and stop cussing all the time and stop being wild all the time and stop being mad all the time. Maybe then, maybe I'll start changing. It could be better. See truth, honesty, and just. Those are only three. I didn't even get to all of them. That's what he says. He said, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure. Now we go into being pure, being pure, embracing purity. Not afraid to embrace, embrace purity, guys. This is what I'm saying. Learn to be pure before God. You girls, if you if you have not lost your virginity, you don't have the time losing your virginity. Stay pure. Come on, so we stay pure. Then we stay pure. Young boys, stay pure. There's nothing wrong with being a virgin. There's nothing wrong with it. Embrace that. Embrace being pure. Embrace giving your life to God. Embrace it. I, I, come on, embrace that. Embrace that. I told my daughter, here's a period of I want to go this year when I do a period. I want to do a period of the young girls. I say, young girls are here, teenagers, come on, let's come. Because there's nothing wrong with embracing purity and saying, I'm not going to wait. I want to wait. I want to wait. See, the thing about that is sometimes our, 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 our purity in, in a sensual way is like a candy bar. It's, it's for when you get married, it's for your husband, your spouse. But when you give it away to everybody, by the time you give it to your spouse, it's all crushed and smashed. I'm not trying to bring you guys any guilt, but when you get saved, God forgives you, God justifies you. But if we, can, if we can, young teenager, young adult, hold yourself off into marriage. There's nothing wrong. Come on, there's nothing wrong. Reflecting to 
plan or purpose in your life. That means that you're going to reflect to plan a purpose for what God has for you. You're going to meditate on this and say, you know what? I can't be doing this no more. I can't be acting like this no more. I can't be doing this no more. So that means I'm going to embrace this truth. Not a lie no more. What is true. Not, not what I think, but what is true. What is honest. Not what is deceitful, but what is honest. I want to embrace what is just, what's going to guide me to God's will. I want you to stand this way. I want you to stand on this one. Here's what Paul says. That's what he's saying. He says this in verse 3 and 12. He says, Not that I have already obtained, or am I already perfect, but I press on that I make hold of what is which is Christ Jesus is made up for me. He says, I'm not a perfect man to say. He said, but I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on. I know a lot of us, we're not perfect, but we are we are we're pushing to be perfect. The word perfect is mature. That we begin to be mature enough to know what is right and wrong. To be mature, to be able to embrace the truth. To be mature, able to be honest with ourselves. enough to let God guide us. Our church is saying, you know what? I, I, I know I'm not where I should be. There's some things that I need to adjust. There's some things I need to fix. Being open enough, guys. Because at the end of that scripture, I'm reading one more time, that scripture says this, the things which you've learned and received, in verse 9 and 4 of Philippians, things which you've learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace. God said, I want to bring peace while you embrace these things. Well, there is a lot of questioning, well, there is a lot of doubt, was there, was there a lot of uncertainty? He goes, but if you start doing this, you embrace what is true, what is, what is honest and what is just. He says, I want to bring peace to you. I want to bring peace to you. Every head bowed, every eye closed this morning. God is here. God is here. Maybe you're here this morning saying, Pastor, I don't, I don't know the God you're talking about. I don't know this Jesus. I, this is my first time here. I, I was invited to come out. And I just want, I just, I, I, I want this Jesus that you're talking about. I, I want this change. I've been, I've been grabbing a hold of the wrong things, doing the wrong stuff, caught up in a lot of different things. But today, I want to give my life to God. I want to give my heart to God. I, I need a new beginning. I need a new start. I want to get things right with God. If that's you this morning, lift up your hand. I want to pray with you this morning. God bless you. Anyone else? Anyone else? God bless you. God bless you. Maybe you're here this morning. God bless you. Maybe you're here this morning. Say, Pastor, I've fallen away. I've drifted away. I, I haven't been doing what's right. I've been far from God. I need to come back to God. I need to get some things right with God. That, that hit me right now. The truth, the honesty, the just. They just hit me. And I need to get some things right with God. I need to get my life right with God. If that's you this morning, lift up your hand. I want to pray with you. God bless you. This morning, God spoke to you. God ministered to you. Said, "Man, I need to embrace truth. I know it's hard. I know it's. I know it, it's rough, but it's, it brings a difference to you. It brings health to your marriage, health into your life, health into your walk and your personal life. Embracing truth begins to cut out lies and fear. Embrace the truth of God, not the truth of this world, but the truth of God." Maybe you've been dealing with honesty. Maybe you've, you've, some things have lied to you. Some things have lied to yourself. You've deceived yourself. But God is saying today, be free from that. Be free from the lie of the enemy. Be free from it. Be honest with yourself. Free yourself by coming to God and embracing the power of God. Maybe you haven't been guided the right way. You've been guided the wrong way. And you haven't allowed the correction of God to correct you. said, I need it today. I need the correction of God to correct some areas in my life. I need to get what I need to be. I'm not where I should be. I need to get back where I need to be. For the furthering of the gospel, for my marriage, for my life, for my personal self. 
defense in this morning. If you lifted up your hand for salvation or restoration, or God just spoke to you, I want you to come. Come now, come now. Here the altars are open. You come. You push yourself. Come and embrace this word. Embrace what God gave you this morning. You come and you get what belongs to you this morning. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hands came from over there, from over there. Come, come now. You come. Embrace the truth. Embrace the truth. The truth. Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, the life. He, Jesus is. So when you, when you embrace truth, you're embracing Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we love you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, just begin to worship Him right now. Hallelujah. 